Okay, we're uh, rolling down the freeway here in Guangzhou. I got Simon Lee with me, and he is the marketing guy for Hope Hospital in Zhuhai. And Hope Hospital is the, well, I could say probably the premier place in China to get stem cell injections done. And they do them for various reasons. But I've come here to get them in my knees. So we're going to, uh, Simon picked me up at the, uh, at the airport in Guangzhou. And it's about two and a half hours, he said, eh? Yeah. To, over to uh, the hospital. So, and we're not going to go to the hospital today. We're just going to go to the no, no, hotel. Go to, uh, we'll go to the hotel. We go tomorrow morning. Yeah. And I guess it's pretty quick, eh? What, what's the process when you go in the hospital? Uh, about totally two hours. Yeah. You go at the morning now call. The, the property stuff uh, finished before the 12. And what do they do to you in those two hours? Uh, first, when you go, you do to some, uh, what to say, in the, the doctor will chat and they'll be doing some testing for you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then we, the, after we be checking, we make sure you hang on the kidney. Yeah. And sometimes we get an injection for you. Yeah, and they take the, some one hour for this. Okay. Uh, you feel nothing, then you can go. Okay. Yeah, so it's pretty quick. Very quick. Can, I don't know why so many people are doing the knee transplants. I guess they just don't know about these uh, stem cells because it's not legal in America, Britain, and Australia, places like that. So I guess they don't trust it. But for me, I didn't want to start a big knee operation. I think those knee operations, they only last for about 20 years, don't they? Mm -hmm. So I'll give you some more information. This Hope Hospital in Zhuhai, they have been doing this for 11 years. These. And the technology for it comes from Hong Kong. Yeah, right? Hope Technology, yeah. So that's the, that's the company that is really running the show, but it's not legal in Hong Kong because they follow America and, yes. and UK and, yes. and, and those other things. So <clears throat> Simon was explaining, when I sent him an email a year ago, then he'll explain my situation to the doctors there and they decide what it is I need and they give instructions to the hospital in Zhuhai to, to do it, where it's legal here. And uh, so they're really controlling it, but they're outside the loop because they're under a different, different jurisdiction there. Now, you said they get the stem cells from the umbilical cord, right? In yeah. I'm going to call it cord blood. I'm going to call tissue and I'm going to call blood. And what? Cord blood. The blood. Yeah, the blood. Yeah. Right. They may take two kinds to stem cell. Okay. Now, how, once they've found a girl in Zhu Hai and, yes. and, and, and uh, they've checked yeah. her and her husband, they have no uh, problems in their blood. No, no problem from the family problem. No, yes. no yeah. family problem. Yes. So they're gonna, and she's agreed to give her yes. stem cells. Yes. And they get the umbil umbilical cord from her. Yes. Then how do they get the stem cells out of the umbilical cord? Actually, actually the umbilical cord is uh, really have the very rich stem cell there. Yeah. So we cut, cut, and then separation. Yeah. Separate the stem cell. Yeah. And then do it themselves to for culture, second generation, third generation, something like that. Uh, multiple, mul uh, multiple to the, uh, the quantity we you need. But how do you separate the stem cells from the other cell? Do, do they use a centrifuge? Yeah, we have just the separator in the lab. Yeah. A centrifuge. Yeah, right? centrifuge, and then uh, just uh, take the stem cell, 
and they go for cell culture. Yeah. And the stem cells goes to the outside when you're spinning? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Because stem cell is uh, much, uh, it is the thicker cell in the umbilical cord. Thicker. It's a thicker, thicker. Yeah. Compared to the other cell. Right. But when it's separation, the cell will go out. Okay. Uh, so it's easy to, to get the stem cell oh, okay. and they go for the cell culture. Yeah. And what is the cell culture? They're growing cell more? Yeah, no, no. Cell culture, two, two main, two. One is the multiple, multiple the, the cell quantity. Multiply. Multiply. The cell, yeah. cell quantity, right? Right. Because uh, we, we must not be enough. Enough for, for we paste the best cell in the body. Right. Yeah, that's the mo mo most important. So you want third generation stem yeah. cells. Yeah. How, how long when you're in in this culture in your lab? How many days to get the third generation? Okay. Then uh, about 48 hours. 48 hours. Yeah. Okay. After 48 hours, we culture to the third generation. We put in the minus 80 degree. Minus 80. Yeah. X zero. I like the degrees for, for keep for a long time. Okay. Until the patient is coming. Uh, okay. once you, once, after you come in, you you will you step up the temperature of the stem cell until until your body hit temperature. Okay. Uh, 30, 30, 30, something like that. And then inject your body. Okay. Before you inject the body, we will check the cell how many percent of the cell is dying. Okay. Because you come uh, Inject all the dyes that self to you, this is nothing, they don't know really, yeah. right? So right. Before injection, you have a lot of things to do okay. to make sure the cell quality is good. Right. And the survival phase, survival phase is good. Yeah. Uh, less than less than one percent. Right. We have the equipment to see that the how many cell is dying. Okay. Uh, must be less than one percent. Yeah. Yeah. Let's yeah. say we give we give you a uh, promise, we give you the 15 million stem cell for one unit, right? Right. Uh, but actually, we, we, we our cell our lab we're doing the 60 million because one percent we will die. Right. Right. Yeah. But it's just guaranteed you have you will see more than 15 million stem cells. Right. 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 Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And even though I'm getting him in the knees, yes. I mean, yes. I probably expect I will feel better. Yes. My whole body will feel yeah, better because yeah. you can't just keep. Keep cells in your knees, they yeah, move, yeah, 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 they right, spread yeah, around, yeah, don't yeah, they? Yeah, in your blood. Yes. Before I go inside, I want to take a video of the outside of this building. This is the hospital in Zhuhai that's dedicated only to stem cells, nothing else here. They have a second hospital in Zhuhai, but the second one is uh, for other things. So we're just going to go inside now. Okay, so ECG was done. Waiting for blood tests to come back. Uh, that just shows if I'm a bleeder or not. And here is a shot of my little room. So you can see. Uh, it's pretty big. It's just more or less this room is for relaxing it or if you had an overnight stay. Uh, but uh, So they're going to take me to the operating room to do the actual injections. And uh, they get people from all over the world coming here. There was some kid from Dubai came, and he was here uh, a year, the Dubai or UAE government paid for everything. He stayed here. And I think he was the one uh, Mr. Lee, that was the guy who couldn't see, right? The blind, the guy from Dubai? Yeah. He couldn't see. Yeah. So, okay. so they gave him stem cells how often? Every week or every week. Every week every gave week. him stem cell injections. And after about a year he could see the outlines of people again. So I think what happened is he had a brain tumor of some sort. It cut off blood supply to his eyes, and so he lost his sight. So after about a year, 
he could see the outlines of people again. And did the light on And he knew if the light was on or off. So they said, okay, stop the treatment, go back to Dubai, and uh, let it continue to work. And, and uh, in the future, if you decide you want to come back for more treatments, come back. So that's what happened with that guy. With another guy, there was, he had a, he was from Libya, I believe. And he had, from the war, he had a paralysis. Uh, he couldn't walk. So <clears throat> this was when Muammar Gaddafi was still uh, in charge there, and the government was a working government, so to speak. So they paid for him to come, and he got these treatments, the stem cells they inject into his spine, and it reconnects the nerves. Yeah, so sure. this nerve reconnection uh, got it so that he could move his legs again. But how many, how many treatments did he have? You say female? Three months. Three courses of treatments. Three courses of treatments. Every month, another course of treatments. So, but then uh, Hillary Clinton had Momar executed there with their infusion of arms to the rebels. The government fell, and so the money stopped for this guy. So um, he had to go back. But you get. Uh, all kinds of people from all kinds of countries with all kinds of different problems coming here. Mine was just for the knees. Uh, 33 years ago, while sprinting for uh, getting ready for a ski holiday, <clears throat> I tore a, men a meniscus in my right knee. And so ever since then, it's been a source of problems and I couldn't sprint on it. I could, you know, run but not sprint. But about, starting about three years ago, it just became painful to start jogging on it again. So I stopped all running. So now 64, heading for 65, starting to give problems just turning on it, you know, and uh, bending it. So I thought this would be the time to come. And I decided to get both knees. It's just harder to get back here. So. As you're here, you may as well do them both. And so that's where we are today. So we'll get back to you in the operating room. This is Dr. Ma. Yeah. We didn't introduce him. And he's been here six years. And Simon has been with me since I landed in Guangzhou. He, he picked me up. Uh, Two and a half hour drive to the hotel, took me to dinner, picked me up this morning, yeah. stayed with me the whole time, introduced me to all their past patients, and now he's here in the operating room. The stem cells are on the top floor of this building, so when I'm in this room, they bring them down, so they're only out of the culture lab for five minutes. Uh, if they they die very quickly, so if you take them out, so, uh, it's important that they have them here in the same building. You don't want them an hour in transportation. So the other thing we're noting is that there's no anesthetic, no anesthesia, so I have a, a wait for the procedure, which is. Uh, on the positive side, because there's no cutting, there's no opening up my knees. The problem with knee replacement surgery is it's terribly invasive. You know, when you think about it, you're opening your leg up, replacing a part of it, and, and it only lasts for 20 years, so you know what happens at the end of the 20 years. So that's probably maybe WD-40 they're putting on for the antiseptic there. Kill any germs. Yeah, we don't have any germs. 
ของเราเนี่ยเพื่อเพื่อมาเชื่อ Doctor Ma how many knees have you done how many how many knees have you done oh oh uh, by me yeah only knee how many 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 many, many. More than many oh, such as me, such as uh, I've done. Oh, such as many. Okay. Mm. Mm. Too yeah. many to remember. Yeah. yeah. Because there's a very common problem, right? Very common problem for older people. Even the younger people also have the same problem. Yeah. What about uh, elbow for like athletes, athletic people? Yeah. Elbow. Yeah. Any of them come for that? Yeah, many, many, especially the sportmen. Yeah, you pay the ten x ten x something like that. Okay. Yeah. Maybe there will a little pain. Mm. Yeah, a little pain. Stem cells injections in the brain would it make me smarter? <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Yeah. Possible. Yeah. 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 In the head that you can grow new hair. Yeah. Uh, I wasn't aware of that.
buckle can show me the patch ID. Yeah. Okay, that's good. Last one. Okay. Take it easy. Good morning. Okay, I'm sitting here in my office in China, uh, approximately 48 hours after the injections. And I'm going to just show you where we are. So here's a map of the world, and we come over to this part here. Oh, let's see. Okay, here's Australia down here, Indonesia, and coming up here, we've got Hong Kong. There's a big island down here. This island is called Hainan. It's a province in China. And we're right on the southern tip of that province, right down the southernmost part of China, actually. Hong Kong is there. Macau is there. And Zhuhai is right beside Macau. So uh, this is where the stem cells happened, right here. This is called Guangzhou. Guangzhou is the biggest uh, airline hub in southern China. Of course, in northern China, it would be Beijing up here. So if you're flying from Europe, you might come to Beijing and then to Guangzhou. If you're flying from North America, you might come to Guangzhou directly, or if you're coming from Australia, you probably come to Guangzhou. That's your routing. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, You could, if you flew into Beijing, you could probably then transfer a plane right to Zhuhai. You wouldn't have to go to Guangzhou and, and then do the two and a half hour taxi ride like I did. But uh, of course that would be up to you. So <clears throat> I imagine there's a lot of people who are thinking, oh geez, I've just been an accountant all my life, never left my little town and never been anywhere much and could I find this place in China? Could I do it on, on my own? Well, it's pretty easy and they make it as easy for you as, as they can. You know, like he drove two and a half hours to pick me up at Guangzhou and then straight to the hospital. So they are very near an international airport a major hub, so that means direct from overseas, Guangzhou. So it's pretty darn easy to get there. And then he stays with you through the whole process. You know, he, he's with you in the waiting room. You get, they take your blood to make sure you're not a hemophiliac. You're going to bleed if, if they had to cut you for some reason, I guess. And... Um, they take an ECG in that little room before you go into the operating room and make sure you're not going to have a heart attack, I guess, with the ECG. They just want to read your rhythms, heart rhythm. And uh, then an hour later you're in and as you saw from the videos, you know, 15 minutes you're out of there. <clears throat> they want me to wait around for half an hour before going anywhere. We laid, waited a little longer for transferring videos, so it didn't matter. So that's the long and short of the 
stem cells. You can get it for almost any kind of affliction that you have. The best thing to do is to uh, email Simon Lee and you know, find, tell them what your problem is and can you fix this. So uh, that's what I would recommend. Now, to get back to the, the reason I made this video, it started out wasn't for the stem cells, but I was doing it anyway, so I put it on the end. <clears throat> There's a bunch of people following NMN, which is nicotinamide mononucleotide on the internet. And my NMN experiment had one real good, or a couple of real good YouTube videos about it. So I did a bunch of research on it wanted to try it. Uh, what, it what it is, is uh, they've been doing experiments with mice and they found the mice could exercise twice as hard and they lived much longer, maybe twice as long or quite a bit longer with this stuff. And, you know, to get everything through uh, Food and Drug Association takes a lot of time, a lot of human trials. There's human trials going on now, but of course I didn't want to wait 30 years for the human trial results, so you know, at age 64 I want results now. So I started, I uh, ordered a couple bottles to start and within two days I noticed a big difference in the gym. Sort of, but The gym is my yardstick. So uh, <clears throat> I can measure, you know, from my, what my limits are from day to day changing, so that's my, how I measure if, if something's working or not. So I've been doing a bunch of stuff. I've been doing keto, eliminating carbs from my diet, eliminating all sugar, all carbs, keto. Uh, I've been doing intermittent fasting, usually when I'm in Dubai only, which is over six months a year, away from my wife's foods. I, uh, she's always trying to, you know, push her stuff on me, but I, I'll do one meal a day if I can, most days. And what that does is, <clears throat> after about 10 or 12 hours, your blood supply doesn't have any food and nutrients left in it. So, you unlock your fat stores. Hi, Jane. So, uh, when you unlock your fat stores, your body runs off fat. It still has food, but it's fat, not, um, not glucose or something from your blood. So that's what I do there. Jing, do you want to say hello? No. This is Jing. Say hello. Hello. People all over the world see you. No. Jing is, uh, she's a feng shui expert. She's just been rearranging the entire house today and making it. I've been ghost or so. Yeah, she believes she's <laughs> a little bit nutty that way. I haven't been able to cure her of that. But. I'm trying to get some psychiatrists to see her. <clears throat> anyway, uh, I was telling you about NMN. So, NMN, your body's got, here's what I've learned about it, true or false. Your body's got about 30 trillion cells in them. <clears throat> and in each cell is a thing called NAD. And from what I can understand about NAD, it's, it's a thing that allows you to produce energy. So, there's a couple of things. One's called Krebs cycle, and I've read it about four different times, but I still can, I have a hard time putting it into words what Krebs cycle it is. But it's, it's an energy process in your cells. And this NAD is moving electrons around. It's an electron transfer thing for energy. And it's also involved with converting glucose to energy. So as you get older, you get less NAD in your body. And when you have less NAD, you have less energy. So the NMN uh, uh, causes your body to produce more NAD. So 
that's the advantage of the NMN. And there's another thing called uh, resveratrol. Resveratrol is the stuff you get in the skins of red grapes, but you'd have to drink 20,000 bottles to get all the, uh, the value from it. So rather than drink 20,000 bottles of wine, you just take this little capsule. So within about two days of starting on the NMN, I noticed a change in the gym. And uh, I was just able to do everything longer, more. You know, I went from, uh, I was doing a four minute handstand, and then two days in the NAD, I was doing a six minute one. Uh, I'm not one of these guys that goes into the gym and writes down in a book every day what you do. You know, to, to me, that's a, not of much value. But I did notice a huge jump in the numbers in the gym. I, so I can't tell you exactly what they were right now. But right off the bat, they seemed to go up by 20 or 25 percent. And uh, and. Now they've gone up quite a bit more than that. So, less, I, total I was on NAD now for about, or NMN for about three months. And uh, the other day before they tore up my gym, I was doing uh, with deadlifts, I was doing 390. I was trying to get to 400 before I came in this holiday, but 390 was all I could get. And um, I was doing 340 10 times. I was doing 270 30 times. And so then when they tore up the gym, I had to switch over to squats. I hadn't been doing any squats until that point. And the other day I did 363 times. So if, for an old guy, I mean, it's not certainly not Olympic. But for an old guy, 64, you know, with bad knees, it's it's kind of a lot. So uh, now here's a very strange thing I found about NMN. And so I started at about first uh, of June, somewhere around there, and around. Uh, in July sometime, middle of July, finally I'd gone to this sports doctor in Dubai to look at my knees because the one knee was <clears throat> that I'd injured many years ago was, was uh, you know, quite a bit of discomfort. So he laid me on the table and he bent my knee up, you know, to my chest like this. And he says, what's that on a scale of 10, for, 1 to 10 for discomfort? And I said, about a 7. And when you come out of the elevator and change directions, a bit of discomfort, you know, in your knee. Well, a month later, when two weeks before I was coming for the stem cells, the discomfort vanished in my knee. I can pull my knee right up to my chest. There's no more discomfort. I can, most of the time, I don't feel anything change in direction, like, you know, like this on the knee. There's nothing. So I can't think of anything that would have, there's no other changes in my routine other than the NMN, two and a half months on it, taking about a gram a day that could have done that. So I came anyway, had the booking already made for the stem cells and had that done anyway. Now it's two days after the stem cells and the stem cells are supposed to regrow your cartilage. Now that doesn't just happen in three days. So that's gonna be, uh, you know, um, I don't know, maybe a couple, two, three months before I could think about, you know, doing much running uh, on that knee. Now, the stem cells to, to me seems like a good option for heavier people that are quite athletic. For example, if you're Yao Ming or, um, uh, you know, any of these real tall MBA guys, you're going to be heavy. You're going to be 
250 pounds, and that pounding, when you're sprinting down the, that, that destroys your cartilage in your knees. So these guys, I think Yao Ming had to stop NBA because of his knees. So uh, these are the type of guys that would benefit from from this uh, option. But I think the NMN is also an answer. So that's my take on it, uh, good or bad. And uh, so I'm just going to take you for a little walk here. Just for those of you who have never been to China, and just show you around. So this is my house. It's a place I only come here between jobs. I don't. There's no job here for me in China. So, and but it's on this island. That's the sea out there. Winter time here, you can actually swim in the sea. And uh, it's not. It's not a big city, like on the mainland. And so, uh, it's kind of a cool place, but uh, I started buying apartments here about uh, almost 20 years ago. They were real cheap, and the prices started going up. So they're not really cheap anymore. And finally, a couple of years ago, I get into the, about two years ago, I get into this villa. The villa is sort of nice. My wife's a bit of an artist. She made that thing. Took her a year to make it. It's a, it's a uh, cross stitch. And then she's into all the feng shui stuff. So she set this thing up here today with all the. Jade stuff on it, and uh, that's the house. Maybe I'll switch the camera around a bit. It might be better, might be a little bit better. Show it to you like this, because then I can see what I'm filming. So this is the this is the house, and uh, I lived in a small apartments here for almost 15 years before getting a villa. I don't know why they don't call them a house here, they call them villas. And we got a bunch of, she collects all this jade stuff and seashells, illegal endangered seashells. And they carve all this stuff into them and uh, like that. And she made this thing here, I'm going to show you. Took her a year to make it. It's a. It's actually a famous scene from Chinese uh, history. It's like a thousand year ago. It's like a holiday or uh, represents some holiday in China. And uh, that's this cross stitch. It took her a year to do it. So we got a bit of a yard here. And uh, we built an extra two bedroom apartment down the stairs. And uh, other people around us are just finishing their villas. They're, they're just roughed in. Some people, you know, they have the money to finish. Some people don't. But that's, uh, <clears throat> that's my story, and I'm sticking to it. And if you got any questions about NMN or stem cells, uh, just put them at the bottom of the video. Uh, I should read all the comments. Can't guarantee it, depending on how many they are, but I'll get back to you if I can.